Man, how you doing, bro? You alright? Yo, what's good, bro? Yeah, not too bad, man. Everything good, man. Uh, yeah, so introduce yourself, bro. My name is Joshua the Real Ward Jones. Yeah. I'm a uh, boxer so, out of the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. Definitely, man. So, uh, how's your career going so far? You're 6-0 with three KOs. How do you feel it's yeah. going so far? It's, it's going good, you know. It's, you know, I, I had my little, I mean, chill time. But it, it, as far as now, like, it's going good. Back up and running, mm. you know. Training hard, working hard. Waiting for my next mm. date. You know, I was supposed to be fighting on the 25th. Uh, uh, yep. June, but they pushed it back to uh, July 24th. Okay, all right, I hear that. Um, so yeah, like I just want to get to know a bit more about your story, obviously, um, to get you a bit more exposure. Um, uh, how was uh, growing up like in Philly because obviously it's a rough area, and I've spoken to a lot of Philadelphian fighters, and they say it's a really rough, tough area. Yeah, how would you yeah. describe it? I'm from North Philly, so I grew up real hard. The Badlands, if they, if they want to talk about neighborhoods, uh, yeah. one of the worst parts of Philly. You know, I grew up losing a lot of friends. Yeah, and, and, and going through a lot of things. Sticking to it, sticking to the plan. You know. Yeah. So how how did your uh, journey into boxing come about? When did you start boxing? Just a bit of a technical difficulty. Hello, Josh. I think I lost you there. Bear with me, guys. We're going to get Josh back on. I think we've got a bit of technical difficulty. Oh, yeah, we're going to get him back on. Uh, yeah, so he's exciting out of Philadelphia. 6-0 and with three KOs to get behind him, guys, you know. We're just going to get him back on live. Uh, My bad, my bad. I was going, I was going through this area where there was nothing there. Come on, bro. No problem, man. So I was saying, like, um, how did your uh, amateur career start, and when when did you get into boxing? Uh, my amateur career it started because of my dad. You know, I was, I I didn't get into boxing to become a boxer. I got into boxing because it was a punishment. You know, because I was always fighting on the streets, getting into trouble. So my dad took me somewhere where I could fight at. You know, he said he wanted to take me somewhere where kids love to fight. So I ain't think nothing of it, but he took me to a boxing gym where I, where I sparred, I boxed, and I got dropped. My first day in the boxing gym, I cried, and, I, and then I didn't want to box no more. But my dad gave me a goal. Like if I could beat the kid up that dropped me, then I'll be, I could be able to stop boxing. So I, I eventually got myself together, you know, gave it a couple months, and I beat the yeah. kid up. But then I was like, Dad, I like boxing. Like, I keep doing this now. Yeah. And then he made it. Then me and him had a talk. And he was like, once you start, there's no quitting. You know, we don't quit in what we do. So I decided to keep boxing. Yeah. So what age did you start then? Was it really early? Nine. Oh, wow. So, um, did you win any national championships in the amateurs, or was you really successful yeah. as an amateur? Yeah, I won the, uh, the Junior Olympic Nationals. Uh, I won silver in the pile. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I always made it to, like, the, the the quarterfinals and the semifinals in every tournament I was in, you know, up to becoming mm -hmm. open class. Yeah. yeah, like when I fought in the trials, I lost in the quarterfinals. Uh, yeah. You know, I always had a, I was an amateur standout. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, how did the transition from amateur to pro come about? When, when did you start? Uh, pro 
my last year fighting the Golden Gloves, like I, I lost the love for the amateurs. It was like I, I wanted to turn, you know. I wanted to be able to to make money, start making money for what I do. You know? I was uh, I was having a, uh, my, my my girl. She's pregnant. And my girlfriend at the time. She was pregnant with, with my son. So I had. Hey. You know, boxing was my life. You know, I wanted to start making money from it. So doing something I love, you know, to be able to see my son. Yeah. Definitely, so, man. So I, how difficult is it, like, compared to uh, the amateurs with the professional game? What what difficulties do you face and what challenges? What'd you say? Like, what challenges do you face, like, for, uh, becoming a household name in, in boxing? Um, just thought. You know, when you when you're not signed to nobody, the challenges you face yeah. is, is building your putting the groundwork in for your own career. Like basically yeah. finding your own fights, uh, uh, being able to uh, pay for your opponents with cards that you yeah. fighting on. Like you know, you basically you got to fund yourself. So that's the yeah. hardest part about it right now. Definitely, man. So how are you coping with that at the moment? You said what? Are you coping with all of that at the moment? You managing to fund yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm by myself, you know. But I'm in a, uh, I'm in a greater space, you know. And uh, mm. like my trainer is helping me like find fights and all that. But yeah, you know, it's always good to have a manager and a promoter. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, what are your short term goals at the moment? You know, in boxing, obviously there is long term goals. But what are you looking to achieve in the short term? You reckon? Get that belt. I want I want to be in the top ten. Of these. Yeah, you know what? What are you fighting at at the moment? One forty. One forty. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I heard that you had your first professional uh, fight on the Jared Ennis uh, card. So how was yeah. that? You know, the pressure of you know, putting on a performance, and you won by knockout yeah. as well. Yeah, like Jaron Ennis. That's my teammate. Me and him train together. So. Okay. So it was, it was a great feeling, you know, us being able to debut together. You know, we actually fought on a, a couple cars together. So okay. it's always great any time we fight together and put on a great performance and get a knockout. Because we mm. talk to each other before we go out there. Yeah. Is he from Philly as well? Yes. Yes, he He's is. Philadelphia. Byron. Has he given you any advice uh, going growing on to the other stages in your career? Hell yeah, he just be telling me my time. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, so, why do you feel that this fight has been pushed back? Because I was looking forward to seeing you in the ring in the next couple of days, man. Yeah, I was too. They, uh, I don't know. You know, I didn't really talk too much to my training about it. You know, I'm just sticking to what I know best, staying grounded and yeah. keep training yeah. to get ready for the next. Definitely, man. So, you know, as I was saying, the COVID pandemic hit uh, in your career as well. So, did it affect your career and did it affect you mentally? It affected me mentally, yeah. COVID, you know, it. All I believe all boxers suffer from a bit of depression. So, when yeah. you're not able to go to the gym and you got to face the harsh reality, it it messes with a lot of emotions. You have a lot of emotions that go haywire, you know, that you can't control, that you learn to try to control. So it it broke me a little bit at first, but it yeah. like it, it's been a positive because I learned more. I learned more about what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, where do I see myself. I got a, mm. a lot of short term goals and a lot and a lot of long term goals done. Definitely, man. So, how would you describe your fighting style for people that haven't seen you fight before? You said what? How would you describe your fighting style for people that haven't seen you in the ring before? Uh, I'm a boxer puncher. Boxer puncher, I, I, yeah. I can do it all. I'm an all-around fighter. Mm, definitely, man. I look forward to seeing you more into the ring, you know. Uh, what was that also, I was going to say, you also got one draw on your uh, career record at the moment. Uh, what do yeah. you feel went wrong with that fight, man? Because obviously, a lot of people might be critical. Not not me. You shouldn't take it as a personal thing. You shouldn't really think of it like that. But 
You know, we just got to trust that. And I would take a loss. I'll take a draw. Is oh. how I would take a loss, you know? So, I, yeah. I, it messed me up, you know, because I, I won the fight, clearly. Yeah. Do you clearly. think you want to get into the robbery? Because boxing is corrupt, you know. There is a lot, a lot of robberies going on, especially in the yeah. bigger fights. Yep, and he was the highly favored. He had the TV, the Turkish TV out there with him for somebody from Turkey. They had all, all right. the energy drinks. He was sponsored by a lot, you know. Yeah. Shit. But I don't, I don't care. I tried to get a rematch with him right after that, but they didn't want to give me the rematch. Oh, I'm really? Yeah. Definitely, man. So, you know, uh, I see you get a few knockouts. I think your one of your uh, team members showed me a few footages. And your, your timing is really good, man. So, yeah. um, how, did, how did that come about? You know? Uh, a lot of hard work and patience. I have yeah. to be patient with myself because sometimes, sometimes we go rushing things, you know, in that ring. So, I had to learn how to be patient with myself and it just comes. It always comes. Definitely, man. Also, I, I wanted to ask you, like, um, obviously, when you first start your professional career, you're only doing about four or five rounds or six rounds. How How is that? How are you getting into the sort of uh, training for that? And you feel like you're ready for other bigger rounds as well? Yeah. Yeah, I always train. If I go four rounds, I I always train for uh, uh for, for eight rounds. You know, I always yeah. train my body for to go at least eight rounds. You yeah. know, so I already know once the rounds come in, it's not going to be a big transition. It's not going to be a difference because I'm so used to doing more. Yeah, that that I'm going to adjust to it easily. Yeah, definitely. So, what are your motivations like in your career? What what sort of frowns do you want, you know? Is it your son? You said about motivation? Yeah. Bro, I'm motivated by a struggle. It's yeah, cool. did, did, you have, did, you have a, did you have a tough upbringing? Do I have a what? A tough upbringing. Is it tough down in Philly? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I lost a lot of my friends. You know, mm. a lot yeah. of people I grew up with. So I yeah, a lot of, yeah, man. A lot of people like probably in Philly are are on the streets, you know, dealing with drugs and stuff like that. So yeah. how did you sort of come about off that life and that, you know, of people around you and that? I learned from their mistakes. Yeah, the mistakes they make. I had conversations with them about the mistakes that they make and why yeah. they do this, why they do that, and I just learned. And I keep it in my head to always be different. Definitely, man. That's really good to hear, man. Um, is there any sort of like boxers that you uh, sort of look at at the moment and think, yeah, you could beat them, you know, or you could be in that position? Shit, I could, be, I could beat anybody, bro. Just put me in that ring. <laughs> put me in the ring with him. That's how much confidence I got in myself. Definitely, man. Uh, what's the what, what time next fight again? Is it in July? July, yeah. July twenty fourth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got any um? You know any sort of um details on your opponent? I don't never. My train, my training will probably do, but I don't never care who I fight. I prepare for anybody. Yeah, definitely, man. Understand that, man. Um. So how how would you say the COVID sort of coronavirus affected your career? Overall, you know, the, the opportunities was there lack of opportunities as well for for you to fight. It was it was less it was less opportunities before COVID. I'm I'm seeing a lot more opportunities now. COVID All right. actually helped me helped me a lot. How would you say it helped you though? Did you manage to like sort of? Keep mentally sane and keep training during that time. Yeah, yep. It helped me become mentally strong. My mind yeah. be more educated. Definitely, man. Uh, what sort of fights are you looking forward to in the future? Do you want to be uh, a world champion in the future one day? Yes, hopefully. Sir. 
Yes, sir. I will be world champion in the future. Definitely, man. Uh, who do you feel like the 140 division is running the division at the moment, though? Because yeah. there's uh, a Taylor, you know, he just uh, unified the division. Yeah. Did you see yeah. any any of his performance against Ramirez? Yeah, I seen it. It was a good, it was a great performance by Josh Taylor. Shit, I would love to fight him for my future. One day, man, uh, I'm sure you will get there, man. Uh, also, I just saw your clothing line, your your sort of uh, uh, merchandise you're selling. Um, yeah, let, let let people know about your merchandise as well. I started a brand called Real War Fit, right? Um, yeah, it's I start it's a workout brand. You know, we sell like dry fit shorts, dry fit shirt tops, uh, yeah. windbreakers, running running windbreakers. Uh, you know, I'm starting to come out with uh, hats. Uh, uh, I got a lot that's that's coming. So I started the I started the brand because I, I like fitness. I like boxing and every day that has to do with fitness. So yeah, I created a brand because I want to be comfortable when, when I'm in the ring, when I'm training every day. So mm. it, it it actually helped. Like it it went along with it, and I just took it and ran with it. Definitely, man. Uh, where can people buy your merchandise as well? Like, if they're interested. On Instagram, at Real War Fit. It's, it's on my uh, my Instagram page. So, it's at Real War Fit. Uh, I'm actually, I'm in the midst of making my website right there. Yeah. So, it should be out soon. Yeah. So, what, what are the sort of challenges you're facing right now as a professional fighter? What would you say? Like, your like face. I said, it's, it's, it's putting the groundwork in, trying to yeah. get yourself uh, 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 fights and stuff, you know? Yeah, w- your, would you say it's important to market yourself as well because you're up and coming and yes, you sir. want some attention, you want, the, you want the boxing community to kind of notice you, you know? So how, yeah. how difficult is that, you know? It's very, it's very difficult. You gotta have a team with you. You know, when you got a team, everything will eventually fall into place. Hey, yeah, man, definitely, man. Uh, looking forward to your next fight, man. Uh, when's it? Hey. July twenty fifth, right? Yeah, July twenty fifth. Right. Um, and you're you're Sal, you're a Southpaw. Yes, sir. Um, how does that bond well with other opponents? You think Southpaw are uh, tricky anyway? It's awkward. You know? It's awkward for a lot of people. Yeah. And you know what sort of fighter? Uh, Stephen Fulton Jr. You know, he's another sort of Philadelphia fighter as well. Um, I'm, re- I'm really sort of excited by the names that come out of Philly, man. Yeah. Um, so you being amongst them, how does that uh what motivate you to keep going as well? It make me want to just keep going hard, go even harder than what I did before, you know? Because I still got a lot of big shoes to fill. Like, you mean, Stephen Scooter Fuller, he's a world champion. Deron is yeah. on his way to be a world champion. Julia, Julia Williams, he was a world champion. And yeah. uh, Danny Garcia, he was a world champion. Tevin Farmer, he was a world champion. I got big shoes to fill, so I got to keep working harder and harder every day. Definitely, man. Uh, yeah, man. What else would you recommend to your fans? What, what would you want to say to your fans and doubters as well? Follow, when follow you me, and support me. Yeah. You know, you're going to be world champion someday. Definitely, man. Uh, what about the doubters, though? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people doubting you. It's always. It's always gonna be doubters. Doubters gonna be doubters, but that's what I, I like. I like for use it for motivation. Yeah, I, I love my doubters too. Definitely, man. Uh, what are your long term goals then in the future for, for professional boxing? Apart from winning a world title, is there anything else that you'd like to accomplish in terms of maybe yeah, you know giving back to your community or your, yeah. your people. That's 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 my main goal. That's that's my goal even before I become world champion. All I gotta do is make a lot of money, make a bunch of money. And I'm gonna that's the first thing I'm gonna do is get back to my community. 
Mm. That's the first day. And I'm going to start with my community, and I'm going to start giving back to the whole city. Definitely. But it got to start somewhere. 100%, man. Um, so how are you keeping motivated during this time? Obviously, late, late, late notice um, that the fight got cancelled for June 25th. You know, um, did that sort of discourage you, or what, what did that make you feel in, in your mind? Nah, I still feel good, you know. It just gave me more time to go hard. Definitely, man. How, how, would you your, how would you describe your training camp at the moment as well, bro? It's great. I, I train with Jerron Ennis right there. So, really? It's great. Sparring with him, how, how's it going to roll? What's up? Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been sparring with him. I spar with him as well. So... He always he yeah. helped me he helped me look he helped me get sharper in the ring you know and work mm. on the things I need to work on also. What do you feel like you need to work on? Because obviously every school fire has their weaknesses and strengths. But what would you feel <laughs> that your weaknesses? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I work on everything. I still work on the, the boxing basics. I, yeah, I just the work, you know, fundamentals. I just, just like to get better. I, I just feel like there's no room. Like, I feel like I can always do better. With everything, yeah. not just one thing, but all of it. Definitely, man. Um, what was it like growing up in Philly as well, bro? It's hard. It's hard growing up here. You know. Mm. Well, I, I right, probably you know, imagine. Yeah, no, I probably, yeah, no, probably imagine that your family probably weren't that well off as well. Yeah. So how did that, how how did that come up? Sort of affect you and motivate you to do better and to get you know somewhere in life. I always had a good support system from my my parents and them. So we have a lot. So that always motivated me to do better, to get better, you know. Mm -hmm. So I could be able to give them, give them the world. Hundred percent, bro. I look forward to your next fight, man. Um, you know, uh, is there any other sort of words you'd like to say, bro? Thank you, uh, th thank you, bro. I appreciate the interview. Uh, I appreciate everybody who tuned in. I appreciate everything. You know, hear from you guys soon. No, definitely, man. And uh, guys, I'd like to say just make sure you look out for Joshua Real War James. You know, I'm really looking forward to his next fight. And hopefully, you know, he'll be a world champion in the, in the future soon. I really hope for that. You know? Yes, sir. And everyone, give your uh, social media before we uh, finish the interview, bro. You said what? Can you, can you just give a shout out to your social media, bro? Everyone can get uh, behind you, bro. Uh, uh, follow me on Instagram at Josh the Boxer. Yeah. Is there any last word you want to say for your fans, bro? Thank y'all for your support. I appreciate everybody continue to support me. You know, yeah. It, it makes me. It, it just makes me all around better. You know, having everybody support. And I just thank y'all. Definitely. I've got a question there. Would you take the winner of Baby Dame or Stevie Ortiz? Oh, yeah, that's going to be a great fight. Both of them are my guys, you know? It's going to okay. be a great fight. So, who would you favor in that fight? Um, Steve, I know both Steve of them are your guys, bro. Steven Ortiz. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, man. And two last questions before we wrap up the interview, bro. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, who's your current favorite fighter right now in the boxing? Terrence Bud Crawford. Do you think he'll beat Errol Spence if they ever fought? I think it'll be a great fight. It'll be a great, great tough fight. You know, I can't say who will win. Yeah, yeah. it'll be great. What about your favorite all-time fighter, bro? 
All time fighter. Yeah, who's on Jeff, favorite fighter? Jeff Hagler. I mean, I mean Mar Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler. Fair enough, man. Uh, it's good to good to hear from you, bro. And uh, we'll definitely catch up soon before your next fight, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank, Thank you, bro. Thanks for, thanks for coming on the show as well, yeah? All right. All right, peace. All right. Peace, bro. Take care, yeah?